Group member evaluation gives structure to the process of students giving feedback on their peers' skills or performance, working similarly to peer review but without a step to hand in work. This video will show how the tool works, both from a teacher's perspective and as a student giving feedback, as well as how to configure the activity from scratch. So, let's start with a freshly made activity. As with other Feedback Fruits tools, we always start with overall student progress at the top, where we can get a quick overview of how the activity is going. Data on who has read instructions, finished giving feedback, read their feedback, and more can be found in this table. And with the Export Analytics button, we can also download a CSV file containing all this data. Underneath is the first step, Instructions, where we can set expectations for students, followed by the Given Review step and the Received Review step. Once students have given and received feedback, you'll be able to get an overview of their progress as well as zooming into the individual comments and ratings here. Before looking at how students give feedback in group member evaluation, let's see how to configure the activity from scratch. At the top right of the screen is the Edit button, which lets us change the name of the activity, as well as adding in our instructions, and optionally, with the Add Items button, we can attach extra media or resources. Under the instructions are the Student Collaboration options, which determine how students review each other. After deciding this option, you can pull groups from your LMS by selecting them, and when happy, pressing Done. In the second step, Given Reviews, you can configure criteria as well as some other options. First, let's configure our criteria and choose between a rubric or more simple scale criteria or comment-only criteria. Underneath, we can also add rubrics from a library if we're using institutional rubrics or have a personal collection. Choosing a rubric from a library lets us preview and adapt it as necessary. And we can always add more sorts of criteria afterwards, pressing Done when we're ready. The rest of the settings here let us determine the required number of peers to review, whether students will complete a self-assessment, and whether we want to toggle automatic outlier detection. There's more detail on outlier detection in our Help Center if you're interested. The other options in Step 2 are to schedule a deadline for when feedback can be given, letting us choose a date, and with the possibility to grant individual extensions for exceptional circumstances. With allocations, we can determine the method by which students are assigned to their peers for giving feedback. While we recommend leaving this to automatic, there is always the chance to make manual adjustments if, for example, a particular student should or shouldn't be reviewing another peer. With anonymity, you can make reviewers anonymous, so they'll know who they're giving feedback to, but the reader of that feedback will see a fruity pseudonym in place of the student's real name. Visibility determines the conditions or deadline by which feedback given is made visible. We can set a date, but also change it, or decide to publish feedback manually by clicking a button in the activity. And finally, guiding students gives us more space to leave instructions or present the student with tips or a checklist for giving good feedback. The automated feedback coach is also available here and when toggled on, uses AI to give students real-time feedback on the feedback they're writing, aiming to make it more relevant, constructive and thoughtful and training those feedback muscles even more. In the third step, Received Reviews, we can let students rate their received feedback on a 10-point scale, as well as schedule a deadline for this step if necessary. And at the bottom of the activity is a space for managing optional modules such as the Grading module, which is enabled by default, but can be removed by clicking the cross in the top right corner. Configuring Grading means choosing how many percentage points are allocated for each step. If, for example, we want to direct focus less on the scores and ratings given between peers, but more on the process of reading or receiving the feedback. Let's just be sure that the total score adds up to 100% before saving that configuration. Lastly, the grading options here let us determine whether grades are published as a percentage or just a pass-fail, 
and we can toggle on group contribution grading, which uses an algorithm to suggest individual customizations to students' grades based on a choice of factors. Our Help Center details the choice if you're looking to learn more on group contribution grading. And for setup, that's it. At the top of the screen, press Save to save the changes, and once the activity is published, students can get started on giving feedback. So let's take a look at how that works. When entering a group member evaluation activity as a student, the instructions will be shown first, as well as any group members down below, if it's a group activity. After carefully reading the instructions, down at step 2, we can give feedback. This group activity contains a self-assessment, so I can review myself as well as my group members. If there's a deadline, that's shown at the top right of this step, and if the activity is graded, the percentage weighting is shown near the top left. And because reviewer anonymity is enabled, we can see this disclaimer assuring our anonymity to the peer we're giving feedback to. Clicking the Start Reviewing button brings us to the rating screen, where our feedback packet is shown for each recipient. In the case of this self-assessment we're starting with, I am the recipient of my own feedback here. Scrolling down, I can see each criterion, select a rating, and optionally leave a comment. At the bottom of the packet, pressing the Next button brings me to my next peer. I can see the name of the recipient at the top, and continue to give feedback for each peer, before finally landing on the Rating Overview screen, where any last comparisons and adjustments can be made if desired. Pressing Done takes us back to the main screen, where we can await feedback to be given or released by the teacher, or if that's already happened, in Step 3 we can press View Feedback to see what our peers thought of our performance. I can view ratings, as well as comments, and like or reply to them. Reading all our feedback is important and can be graded, in which case we'll see here how much of the grade comes from reviewing the feedback that we've received. Finally, optional steps such as reflections can take place if the teacher has included these modules in the activity. And at the bottom of the activity are where grades appear, if this is a graded activity and grades have been published by the teacher. And that's it. Don't forget that at any time, if you need help, get stuck, or run into a problem, you can always use the blue support button in the bottom left to chat to our support team at Feedback Fruits directly. We're available 24 hours a day on weekdays and can respond in a matter of minutes to answer your questions. So don't hesitate to reach out. And for now, good luck with your group member evaluation.